Hello, good day, and welcome to Lab Talk, a series of expert tips to help you get the most from our products in your lab. Uh, my name is Angela Carnwright. I'll be your moderator today. And today's topic is really exciting because it is a customer request that came through uh, during one of our lab talks earlier this year. Um, so we're going to talk today about a very common item in every laboratory, the biosafety cabinet. And specifically, we're going to talk through the care and maintenance of of the biosafety cabinet. So if you're a lab manager, if you are a scientist, if you are a facilities manager, this one is going to be a really helpful tool for you and for your team. So definitely spread it afterwards. With that, I'll introduce our speaker, uh, Natasha Fitch. Natasha is a commercial manager for our biosafety cabinet portfolio. Welcome, Natasha. And she's going to lead our discussion today. So over to you, Natasha. Great. Thank you so much, Angela, for the introduction. And thanks so much for having me uh, come today to talk to you guys about this really important topic. Before jumping into the care and maintenance of a biological safety cabinet, I thought it would be good to review the airflow patterns of a BSC. So since airflow is the key to maintaining containment at the front opening, it is imperative inflow and downflow velocities are maintained. So on the side here, uh, you can see that we have our HeraSafe 2030i. So that is one of our biosafety cabinets. It's our kind of more upscale BSC. It has a motorized sash, a touchscreen interface, and some glass side panels here that make it just a little bit more ergonomic than our traditional BSC. And on the right here, we have a diagram of the airflow within a biosafety cabinet. Uh, so the green arrow here represents a clean air that is coming in from your lab environment. It's being taken up through the front grill. This air is then going to travel up the BSC into the plenum and either be recirculated within the biosafety cabinet, if it's an A2 cabinet. This recirculates about 70% of the air, or 30 and 30% 30 will be exhausted out of the top of the BSC into the laboratory environment. Or if you have a thimble duct connection, um, it'll be exhausted into the HVAC system and out through there. And so the, this is um, really kind of important for um, maintaining um, containment within the lab. So the inflow velocity per NSF is 105 feet per minute. Um, if the inflow were to get too high, this could risk sample integrity as the environment could then, or the uh, air could then reach uh, the work surface and kind of affect your samples. Um, and if the downflow velocity per NSF is 63 feet per minute, and if that were too high, then samples could escape out of the, or uh, air could escape out of the front opening. Um, and this could impact the individual that's working within the biosafety cabinet. So this is just a little bit about the airflow pattern in a BSC and why it's important to maintain um, the balance at the front barrier. Um, and so I think we're going to jump into next into like a, a, an actual video here uh, that my colleague uh, Dave and myself did. We have the smoke coming out and none of the air that's within uh, or none of the smoke that's within the BSC is getting to the outside environment is all being sucked up into that front grill. Um, even when you have those armrests there, you can see that all of the air is being sucked into that front grill. None is getting from the outside in or the inside out. And when you switch it to the opposite way, um, you can see that as well, that um, all of the smoke is being sucked up into that front grill. None of the air from the outside of the cabinet is getting into the inside of the cabinet. And so then when we go to the next image here, you can kind of see uh, how a biosafety cabinet works within a localized environment. So if you look here, this is the image of a smart port. Um, so this here is when we put the smoke machine um, to our smart port, we have two walls that are negatively pressurized there. And so any of the uh, air inside the, bi the biosafety cabinet is not getting to the outside environment or vice versa. You can see that that smoke is being sucked up through the smart port. If you look at um, BSC uh, uh, maintenance uh, is very important. So in terms of sterility, um, that's where uh, we find that it's most important. So experiments are kind of the most vulnerable when you're working in a biosafety cabinet. You've got the opening and closing of flasks, vials and plates. Um, airflow is invisible, as we had mentioned previously. So there's no indication of contamination until downstream experiments. Um, you don't know uh, clean and dirty air kind of look the same. So you don't have that indication of whether or not you're doing anything wrong within your biosafety cabinet. And in terms of cross-contamination, um, we often have uh, many things going on at once. So 
if you have an unclean or contaminated BSC environment, this can lead to variations in your experiments downstream. So it's just really important, um, you know, to maintain your BSC. Um, and we'll talk about some tips in the next slide on how you can do that. Okay, so the first tip, now people might think that, that this is a very odd tip to kind of give and that it's very, um, you know, obvious, but the thing about a BSC is because um, everything is airflow, you can't see it, you really have to be mindful about what you're doing within your biosafety cabinet. So my first tip is to kind of think before you act and really to focus on your aseptic technique. So a lot of that will involve uh, how you're working within the biosafety cabinet. So we recommend for you to work from clean to dirty. So if you see here on the right-hand side, we have the, an example of how we recommend that you typically set up a, your BSC. So this was um, an example that the CDC NIH um, kind of put out for exactly how you would um, set up your biosafety cabinet. And you can see on the one hand side, you have all your flasks, um, media, anything that's kind of, you know, clean and unopened on one side. You've got your experiments in the middle that are all open to the environment. And then you've got your waste um, and dirty stuff on the opposite side. And so this is an example for if you were right handed, you're going to work from clean to dirty this way. And if you were left handed, you'd work in the opposite direction. But this just really goes to show that you, um, you know, need to be mindful of how you're setting up your BSC. Um, you're going to also want to avoid uh, repetitive in and out of the BSC. Um, so you want to make sure uh, that, you know, when you're when you're in the BSC and working, that you have everything that you're going to need. You want to avoid your hands going in and out, in and out, because every time you come out of the BSC and you're putting your hands back in, you're literally pushing air from your outside environment onto your work surface. So you want to avoid that. We also recommend that you use armrests um, to prevent blocking the front grill. So as I had mentioned previously, um, you know, 105 feet per minute is the inflow velocity rate per NSF guidelines. And if you have your arms blocking the front of the grill, your BSC has to compensate for that additional resistance that's going to be in front of the grill there. So we recommend that you, you use the armrest that, so your hands are kind of hovering above the front grill and you're not blocking that, that area. Another thing that a lot of CGT facilities or GMP facilities will use is a particle counter. So it's a counter that sits on the outside of your biosafety cabinet and there's a probe that will run into your cabinet. You can either have it integrated into your BSC or you can just run it through the smart port or up through your, your biosafety cabinet. Um, and we recommend a fingertip test. So this is a cool test where you can take the probe, you hold it up, you have your gloved hand here and you just kind of rub your fingers together. And if you do that and your hands are a little bit dirty, some particles will actually come off your hand and will be detected by the probe. So that will just help you to know like what is in your surrounding environment and whether or not um, you're maintaining that, um, you know, a sterile environment. Another thing we recommend is to use a checklist. So if you're doing blood processing or you're doing the same type of experiments over and over again, um, you know, just working in that same order, you know, don't switch anything up um, that's going to potentially affect your experiments downstream. And then we also recommend that you keep your airflow smooth. Now, this one's an important one because I think it's really hard to do when you're in the lab, um, is that if you're working in the BSC and or you see someone else working in the BSC, just make sure that your movements are slow. Um, so I have an example down here of, you know, what the average speed is of a spider. So if a spider is moving, it moves at 100 feet per minute. Now, remember, the inflow velocity rate in your front grill is 105 feet per minute. So if a baby is crawling around, that they usually move at about 200 feet per minute. Someone who's walking is at about 300 feet per minute. And then someone who's running is at around 450 feet per minute. So that just goes to show you that if you're walking fast or running around and you're by somebody who's working in a biosafety cabinet, that air that's being propelled off of you could potentially be getting into the BSC and, and contaminating their experiments. We say to be obsessive about cleaning. Um, so when you're working in the BSC, you'll have a daily maintenance that you will do. Um, you know, you'll turn your BSC potentially on in the morning. And then we recommend that you clean your work surface, the interior walls, the windows of your BSC with 70% ethanol. And this is recommended by the BMBL. And they say that it's best to clean from top to bottom, back to front of the cabinet. 
And that's what we recommend as well. And then you're going to want to wait a few minutes to really, before you wipe it down, um, to, to let the ethanol settle and kill kind of anything that's in that environment. We also recommend that you lift up the work surface and clean underneath it. You don't need to do this daily because usually there's there's not much that gets underneath that work surface, but I would definitely recommend at least once a month kind of checking there to make sure there were no spills that came through the front grill or that there was, you know, it was a clean environment. We also recommend underneath the work surface, there's a paper catch um, to check that once in a while and make sure that nothing has been clogged or or taken into that paper catch area. And also to make sure that your valve is closed when you're looking under your, your work surface. So sometimes the valve will be open because there was a spill or someone was neutralizing a spill and then they were um, removing any of the, the, the spilled uh, contaminants through the, the, the valve um, just to make sure that it's closed. Because if it is open and you were to have a spill, it could potentially come through the the BSC and get all onto your floor, which would then be, of course, worse. And moving on to, you know, kind of our uh, last tip here is just around yearly maintenance. So one of the nice things about a biosafety cabinet is that we do have independent um, certifiers and consultants who are qualified to make sure that our BSC is in working order. And these guidelines are set up by the NSF, um, which is, you know, taken into effect for all of North America. And usually a certifier will have, you'll have a sticker or some type of notification on the front of your biosafety cabinet on when um, this, this certification it will come due. Um, so most have a sticker, but for those intuitive BSCs that have a little bit more connectivity, you might get some type of notification that will pop up on your touchscreen interface. And when your certifier does come in um, to do a check, there's a bunch of tests that they will perform. So one of the main tests is that they're going to do uh, perform downflow and inflow velocity tests. They're going to uh, check the HEPA filter leak test here. So there's a couple of images I have of my colleague Dave doing these tests here on the right. You can see he's doing the HEPA filter leak test where he's making sure, you know, um, that the filter is working properly. It doesn't need to be replaced or patched. They will also do uh, site installation and assessment tests. They'll do like window positioning alarm. They'll test the exhaust alarm, et cetera. And in some cases, they'll do a lighting intensity test, a noise level test, a vibration test, electrical. So those are kind of more at the discretion of the certifier or if you request for them to do those tests. And lastly, if you have that a BSC gets moved or gets exposed to something very hazardous, um, or the internal parts need to be examined. So you need to open up the plenum to check the, the filter or the motor, um, then a decon will probably be need to be done. And that will be done by the certifier and they'll use either chlorine dioxide, formaldehyde or hydrogen peroxide to do that. So that's kind of our main tips for, for what we recommend um, when you're working in the BSC. So now I think we'll go over to the immersive lab and we have a couple of our biosafety cabinets there. And um, Megan, our colleague, can kind of show us exactly how you lift up the work surface and how you clean. Hi, Megan. Okay, great. So Megan is working on our 1300 series right now. So first she's showing our smart clean feature. So this is where the sash of our BSC actually comes down. So to allow you to get better access to the front of the cabinet. And now she's just wiping down the entire cabinet with 70% ethanol. Uh, generally speaking, there wouldn't be anything in the cabinet. You'd want to take everything out, respray it, put it back in. Um, and then she is repositioning that. Next, she's moving over to our 2030i, which is our other biosafety cabinet that I mentioned before. This is our Smart Clean Plus. You can see that she completely opened up the BSC there and she's cleaning this as well, spraying it down, wiping it down to make sure that we get that really good clean and that everything is totally clean for when we're wanting to work within the cabinet. And then Megan is going to show us here how you lift up the work surface. So you can see we have our armrest there at the front. She's lifting up the work surface there to kind of show us the underneath of that. And you would clean underneath there. And you can see the paper catch as well. So the paper catch is that, um, that area right there at the, at the back of the BSC. Just make sure that there's nothing that's been sucked up into there. 
And then she's going to clean underneath there as well. Thank you, Megan. So that's kind of uh, what you need to make sure that you're looking for when you're examining your, your biosafety cabinet. Yeah, that's the that's the uh, the main gist of how we feel that you should kind of clean your cabinet. Um, so, kind of going back to the summary of of what we've learned today. So, BSC maintenance and care is different than other lab equipment because it's so dependent on airflow. Um, for best practices, um, you know, that will lead to proper BSC function, we talked about the armrest. So, wanting to use a stainless steel armrest so you don't block the front grill. We talked about keeping the airflow smooth, making sure nobody's running by you. You're not doing repetitive in and out motions when you're working in the cabinet, and that working from the from clean to dirty and and making sure you're working in that sequential order. We also talked about a daily cleaning regimen where you're using 70% uh, ethanol and then you're cleaning top to bottom, um, left to right. And also following any NSF guidelines or what your biosafety officer would deem is, is the best thing to use to, to make sure that you're achieving the best results. Moving on to some resources that we have, I, I've put a couple of links for the BMBL, um, which is just a series, you know, of, of guidelines that are recommended to, to be used with biohazard materials. Um, the Canadian Biosafety Handbook is also good, as well as the Laboratory Biosafety Manual. I've included a couple literature pieces here for our 2030i and 1300 series, as well as the product tours for both of those um, uh, instruments. And then we have a really great series of videos that we've done on UV disinfection, how to choose the right BSC, and um, working with a particle counter uh, inside your biosafety cabinet, and also the airflow. So that's the, the BSC and airflow is the video where you're going to find the smoke machine. And thank you so much, guys, for the time.